Welcome to Thursday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And we're in our sixth week again of our series, Highway 316. We are looking at the reality of God's unconditional, unfailing, and inseparable love that He has for us. Now, just like the Apostle Paul, and I want to go back over to Romans chapter 5 again, Romans the fifth chapter, because there's some things we want to uh, go into a little bit greater detail detail that Paul said here that are going to be beneficial to us, helping us growing in this, this revelation of this reality of God's love for us. But, you know, the Apostle John talked about knowing and believing the love that God had for us. And then he talked about be, love being perfected in us. Well, love being perfected doesn't mean that you're going to come to a place where God loves you more. No, God loves you infinitely as much as he ever is going to love you it's, you know, in million years into eternity. So God's not going to ever love you more, but we come to a greater knowledge, comprehension, uh, belief, and persuasion of that love. That's what the Ephesians 3 prayer is talking about, being rooted and grounded in the love of God. And then it says that we may be able to comprehend the width, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of God that He has for us. Then the Apostle Paul talks about that he became persuaded. He became persuaded that no, no external thing, no created thing, he, he couldn't go so high, so low, so deep, so far out there that he he could ever be separated from the love of God in Christ. I tell you, that is comforting. That is an empowering revelation to all of us. But Paul didn't just, you know, become acquainted with that. He became persuaded in it. In other words, he became confident in that. He came to a place of full belief that nothing could separate him from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And see, that's kind of where we want to go. That's kind of our end game here. We want love to be perfected in us. We want to be rooted and grounded in it. We want to grow in this revelation of the width, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. And we want to come to a place of being fully persuaded about it. You know, all of us probably at this point, if you've reached this point in this particular series, you're more or less persuaded. There, there. Your greater persuasion. Your persuasion is a lot more than it was in week one. I can tell you that, or before you started watching these. But you know what? That's not the end of it. I believe we can even become more persuaded. What is, what is being fully persuaded about? It means there's no room for doubts and questions in our mind about God's unconditional, inseparable love for us. Now, again, there's God's not. He's not offended at people's questions and doubts, but in the middle of questions and doubts, he's going to present you knowledge that counteracts those questions and doubts, that answers those things. And so you have to take that and you have to dwell on it, focus on it till you become persuaded at that. So that's not a question anymore. So that's not a doubt anymore. And yes, we can come to that place. Paul said he came to that place. The apostle Paul or John also, all, uh, also came to that place. We can also come to that place. Now, notice here in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse number 6 again, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Now, who did he die for? The ungodly. In other words, the undeserving. That's all of us. Every one of us before Christ, B.C. years, were ungodly, undeserving. Notice that Jesus came anyway and died for us. Verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. Now the Amplified says that would be an extraordinary thing for one to die for an upright man, for a noble or somebody who halfway deserved it. But verse number 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, what does it mean, still sinners? We were undeserving. We, we had not earned Jesus at all. So God sent Jesus for what reason? Not because of our love for him. Not because of our good works, our goodness. Why did God send Jesus? God sent Jesus to die for us, his only son whom he loved, his beloved son. Why? Because of his unconditional, unfailing, inseparable love for us. 
See, if we were ever going to be separated away from the love of God, it would have been while we were still sinners. But I want you to see that that was the driving force, the motivation behind the Father sending Jesus, His Son, as that indescribable gift to die for all of us. And you know what? According to uh, the Amplified verse 7, that goes beyond extraordinary. God's love for us goes beyond the extraordinary. Now, of course, he's telling us how much he loved us while we were still sinners. At our the time in our life where we deserved Jesus the least and needed him the most, and we were powerless to help ourselves, that God's love came through for us. It did not fail. It did not run out. It was not weakened. It was not diluted. Not one bit. Not in all of those things right there. In all those things of who we used to be. He's establishing God's love for us, but it doesn't end right there. Because, you know, there, there seems to be kind of an idea in a lot of people, and we're going to look at this a little bit later on, when we look at the access road of God's abundant, overflowing grace in our life. I'm looking forward to that. But it, it, it seems like a lot of times people think, well, they use up all the love of God, the unconditional love of God. They kind of use it all up in just getting saved and get in the door of salvation. And they were just barely saved by the skin of their teeth. And I tell you, from then on out, they better watch it because they're on thin ice. You know, that is not what this, these verses are telling us at all right here. He's establishing not, us, not just the fact that God loved us while we were sinners and undeserving, but the fact that He loves us even, even more surely now that we are born again, that we're in Christ, that we didn't use up all the love and the grace of God to get in the salvation door. There is so much more on this other side of this door. That's what he's telling us here, beginning with verse number nine. That's a whole context of this here in Romans chapter five. He's talking to believers here, not just sinners. We all used to be sinners and ungodly, but we're not anymore. We've been changed. We've been born into the family of God. Verse number nine, it says, much more than you know, you, you'll see that over and over again through Romans chapter 5. He says, much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The Amplified says in verse 9, therefore, since we are now justified, we're no longer sinners. We are now justified. We are acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood. How much more certain is it that, that we, were, we shall be saved by him from the indignation and the wrath of God? Notice if God's love was so strong, so unconditional, unfailing, and inseparable, that while we were still sinners and undeserving, that we were saved, brought into a right relationship with God, that we are his sons and daughters, heirs and joint heirs with Christ. How much more now, surely, how, how much stronger is it now, this reality, that we shall be saved from the wrath of God, from the anger of God, because of the finished work of Jesus? Then he goes on in verse 10 and says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, there it is again, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Again, verse 10, the Amplified says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrection life. See, I believe these are the verses, these are the realities that Paul wrote about in chapter 5 that he became, These are the. this is the catalyst right here for him be, be, to become persuaded, and I can say fully persuaded in Paul's uh, uh, situation, he became fully persuaded that no external condition, no attack of the enemy, no opinion of man is an indication that he had been separated from the love of God in Christ. 
So you know what? The enemy is just not going to get anywhere with Paul, and he shouldn't get anywhere with us trying to bring that garbage, all those lies and deceptions to us, and he, his external uh, attacks against us trying to convince us it's because God doesn't love us anymore. He's withdrawn his love from you because you're just so rotten all of a sudden. No, this is what Paul, this is how he became persuaded right here. He began to dwell, dwell on this. He wasn't looking at the externals and just riddled with doubts and questions about God's love and acceptance for him. You know what? He began to look at the cross of Jesus. He began to look at the demonstration of God's love toward us and he began to focus on that so much so he became rooted and grounded in it and became persuaded. He drove out the questions and the doubts. He just was not going to entertain doubts and questions from the adversary, accusations from the adversary anymore that God didn't love him anymore. And you know what? This is really what got Paul through a lot of bad situations in life. All the stuff he went through, this is why he, at the end of his life, he says that I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith through all these years. You know why, what enabled him to keep the faith, to overcome in all those bad negative circumstances he found himself in in life uh, as, as a, you know, proclaiming the gospel around the world? It's because of this reality, this fact here. He said, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. That's, where, that's what's going to cause us to have that surpassing victory in our life. It is because of God's unconditional, unfailing, and inseparable love that he has for us. I tell you, that is good news right there. This is what the enemy does not want you to know. He does not want you to be rooted and grounded in God's love. He didn't want you to be persuaded about it. He didn't want you dwelling on this reality that Paul's bringing out right here. He wants to be able to bring adversity into your life, negative circumstances, and then hop on your shoulder and convince you that it's because God doesn't love you anymore and God's brought this into pass in your life. <laughs> I tell you, that's why we call him Slewfoot many times. He is a deceiver. He is an accuser of the brethren. This is what he's trying to get to right here. He wants to dominate you and control you in life. Let's just back up just a little bit because there's even some other things he said before this. Now that we are set up for this, you know, when you accept the reality of God's unconditional, unfailing love for you, that puts you in a position of accepting all the other realities that accompany and go along with our salvation. You know, in order to receive salvation by faith from God, you have to have at least some kind of degree of revelation of God's love for you. You know, it's not just the fact that you know the events of the gospel or the uh, or the events of what Jesus went through. There's a lot of people that can that that can, you know, uh, quote and tell you the events of what Jesus went through on the cross, but they cannot tell you why he was there. See, it's not just what happened to Jesus on the cross. All those events are very important. They're significant to all of us. But also the behind the scenes, the motivating factor of why Jesus is there to begin with, why God sent his son here to be the propitiation or die on the cross for all of us is equally important. We need to know the motivating factor behind that. Why? Because really our faith is not just in something it is in someone. Our faith must be in someone, and that someone is God. But if you don't know what's in the heart of God, you can't trust Him. You can't have faith in Him. So you have to know what's in the heart of God that's motivating Him to do all these things, to give all these things to us. That puts you in a position of receiving right there. And see, just like it, you have to have a certain amount of revelation into the person of God, to the heart of God, to the love of God, in order to have faith to receive salvation from God. In other words, get in that initial door of salvation in order to advance and receive all the good things that accompany salvation. You have to grow in that revelation knowledge, that understanding of God's love for us. Uh, Dr. Lester Summerall said this one time, a great uh, man, great man of God, did all kind of awesome things. God did through him, actually. But um, a man of faith. But he said so many Christians, he said most Christians do not advance beyond their initial revelation of God. And see, that, that shouldn't be. 
we should advance beyond. Salvation is the door. It is the big door that we enter into. But there are so many good things that accompany salvation that we also receive. But in order to receive those things, you've got to grow in your revelation of God. In other words, you have to grow in your comprehension of the width, length, depth, and height of God's love for you. You have to know that God's for you, not against you. That God wants you to have these things. You have to know, as we read early in the week, Romans 8, 31, if God did not withhold his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It's the same avenue. You have to know that God loves you. Well, I'm out of time. I didn't have time to read this, so we'll pick up uh, there tomorrow and, and read this tomorrow. But if you'd like additional information, go to TonyCowan.org and tune in tomorrow for an awesome day to end this week.